What's up, y'all? It's your guy, eBay Fight Predictions, in the building, and this is your UFC Vegas 87 Rosa Strike versus Gadzi full card predictions and betting breakdown. Um, you know, the card is whatever. I, I, I like some of the spots for betting, but not the greatest card in the world, honestly. I'm, I'm a little disappointed in Mr. Bald Man Dana White right here. Uh, if you guys can see him, a uh, bit of a clownish move by him, but honestly, card layout though is pretty good in terms of the undercard going up, but the main event, I mean, given, <sighs> given God's the main event, you know, if I'm not like betting on the card, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's very tough. Thanks to be excited for the main event, but you guys know how it is. Your boy eBay Fight Predictions is a warrior. Uh, if there's a UFC card, I'm watching. So it is what it is. But come on, bald man. Bald man Dana White. Come on, bro. Uncle Dana, bro. Bro, it's, it's getting a little ridiculous. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous, bro. You know, I thought we were leaving the Jarzinho Rosen Strike uh, Fight Night main events back in 2023. Now, you know what I'm saying? It's 2024 and we're still doing this. It's crazy. But besides that all... Uh, before we get into the card, though, go follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get this eBay fight prediction nation growing, y'all. Um, if you haven't subscribed, if you're new to the channel, subscribe. You know, it's your, it's your boy. Just a just a little African kid talking about some fights. So, hey, and giving you some, you know, some of my <laughs> my betting expertise or, or or my bad betting expertise or my good betting expertise. But whatever, I'm giving you something, uh, something that I consider an expertise. But hey, let's get into this card. We start off the card with Christian Lee Roy Duncan versus Claudio Ribeiro. Um, so simple fight. I think uh, Christian um, is the better striker. I think he's the better athlete, and I think he's the better MMA fighter. Only thing is, Claudio Ribeiro does swing really crazy, does throw with a lot of power, and has really bad intentions. Uh, he got knocked out viciously against uh, Roman Kopilov, so he's coming off a really bad KO, and he's been knocked out by Abdul Razak Hassan, too. So he's been knocked out a few times. He does have a win in the UFC uh, against Joseph Holmes. Uh, so obviously, the guy does hit really hard, and he does go for it. But besides that, though, I mean, I, I think Christian Leroy is the better striker, even though obviously he's not Roman Copula, you know what I'm saying? But I do think he's the better striker out of the two. Um, I, I, he's pretty good in the clinch. I, I mean, he has that weird fight with fucking, um, with Armin Petrosian, but, and then he, he's coming off one over Dennis Tulian, and then obviously the little injury with uh, Desko to Dvorak. But besides all that other stuff, I, I, I think Chris, Christian should, should beat him uh with the one two with the work in the clinch. Uh and I think he gets the decision victory. I just think he's gonna be the more technical fighter here. Um I in, in terms of a betting spot here, I, I I don't have nothing on it. I I mean, yeah, I, I'm pretty confident Leroy does win this. I, w I wouldn't be mad if he sprinkled something on his money line, but um but yeah, the Claudio Rebeer does swing hard, so I don't know. It's it's a weird situation. So so yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I got Christian Leroy Duncan here. Uh, probably getting the decision victory. Um, next fight though. Uh, oh man, this is a hard thing to say. Loic uh, Razabab versus Abdul Kareem uh, Al Sawadi. Uh, I, I, first of all, shout out to Kareem, bro. Uh, that guy, man. I, I, Y'all remember the Hardwick fight, bro? That was the funniest shit of all time, bro. Uh, like. So they were they were hyping up this kid George Hardwick for like for years not years I shouldn't say years a week right one week and they're telling me hey he's this he's that he's da 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 and man this boy Abdul Kareem you know uh, went out there and fucking man he put on a master class of performance man he looked really good striking looked good the jab looked good one two he, he was moving out of the way of punches and strikes and kicks from uh, George and he landed takedowns when he needed to. Uh, Luik has had some mixed results in the UFC. Obviously, he's coming off a loss to uh, Matsu Rebecca, and Rebecca is kind of like a bit of a, a fringe top 15 potential prospect uh, at lightweight. Um, he does have a win over Esteban uh, Rubivix, but I mean, I'm not too really impressed with um, the... Uh, the Loic Rabiz, I cannot say this guy's name. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really too impressed with him. Uh, good wrestling. Um, good striking. Obviously, he comes in there. Um, he, he brings the fight. I, I will give him that. He does bring the fight. He, I wouldn't call him scary, uh, per se, but, um, I, I just don't know. Like, I, I feel like in terms of a skill for skill kind of matchup here, I, I just think Abdul, uh, Kareem, uh, Al Sawadi just is, is better than him. I, I really do. I think he's just, uh, 
a better mixed martial artist than him. Um, and I, I think wherever the fight goes, he's going to be all right. I think if this fight goes to the ground, he'll be able to get up or defend the takedowns. And on the feet, I, I think he does edge it out here. I think he's a better striker out of the two. Um, and I, I just kind of, I, I kind of see him winning here. Uh, but should be a good fight though. Uh, nonetheless, I, I can't wait for it. But yeah, I, I got Abdul Kareem, uh, also out of here by, by decision. Should be a good scrap though. I, I honestly can't wait for it. Uh, I was fucking, dude, he, that, that fraud check he gave. I mean, there's been a lot of great fraud checks we've seen over the years, but that one was, <laughs> that was up there. <laughs> that was, a, that was a good one. Uh, next fight, uh, Javid Basra versus, uh, Eamon Zahabi. Um, you guys know what I'm about to say, man. Uh, it's, the, it's the Snow Leopard uh, all day. I, I got Boss right here in a parlay. Um, I, I think he's a great parlay piece uh, on this card. He's a winner. He knows how to win. And the UFC is obviously accommodating a competition for him. So, I, I, I would say, man, you better be tailing this guy and putting money on him until he fights really good competition. But until then, man, he, man, if they keep giving him fights like this, he's going to win. Um, he's the more technical striker. He's good on the ground, good distance management, good boxing, just the definition of a well-rounded fighter. He's not necessarily great in one particular area, but he's good at mixing it up. Um, and I mean, he had a, he had an interesting fight against Victor Henry and, Man, I, I, it felt like he was going to put on a classic on, on Victor, bro. I really felt like he was going to put on a fucking stellar performance. Now, Zahabi's, he's my guy, bro. I, I'll never forget when he knocked out Draco Rodriguez and I told everyone he was going to do that. Everyone laughed at me, da, 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 da. Zahabi's a legend for that. Always. I'll never forget that. But, um, I, I just think he's going to be outgunned here, man. He's 36 years old, uh, at 135 pounds. It's just not a good look. Um, and he's fighting a legitimate prospect. Uh, I mean, this guy is going to be a top 15 guy. I don't know how far he's going to go, but he's going to be in the top 15. He's going to be a, a, a minor player in the division. I don't think he's going to be a world champion. Uh, no disrespect to Basra, but I don't think he's going to be a world champion because that division is just so tough. And not saying he can't, but I just don't see it. Um, but I think he's going to be fucking in there, man. He's a fucking, he's a scrapper. Uh, he's fun to watch and he's well rounded. So, um, first of all, the Basra bros are just good. It's just in their hard workers. I like if you hear Sean Strickland talk about this guy, he's one of the hardest workers in, in, in the game. It's it, it. Well, I shouldn't say in the game at, at extreme couture in Vegas, you know, anywhere you see this guy training, they say he works extremely hard. So he's, Hey, it is what it is. I, I got boss right here by decision. He's usually a decisionator to be honest with you. So yeah. Um, but yeah, he's just the more well-rounded fighter. I, I, I'm telling you, See, he's a lock. He's a lock. He's going to win this fight. So, yeah. Uh, next fight of, uh, uh, Vinicius Oliveira versus Yanzi Gamari. Um, obviously we know Oliveira, legit power puncher, crazy knockout on the contender series, just completely smoked this guy. Um, Giannis is coming off a weird little fight, uh, with, uh, William Gomez, obviously the little body thing and the controversy there. And we all know what's surrounding that. But in terms of the matchup here, uh, I just think when you look at the size, man, I know they're both 5'9", but it just feels like Vinicius is just going to be the bigger guy, you know? Um, and I, I don't know, man. I just honestly feel like he he's just going to overwhelm Giannis. Yeah, I really, really do. And um, I just think Oliveira, his power, his leg kicks is just going to be a little too much uh, for Giannis Gamora. And I just think he might get a finish here, man. I really, really do. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the second or third, but I, I do got Oliveira here by getting the, the knockout victory. Nothing against Giannis. I think he's a good fighter, but I think just Vinicius, I, I, he's just a fucking dog, bro. Like, I, I just I love how he sets up his power punches with his leg kicks and I think he's just going to fucking hurt you on this. So I, I got Vinicius Oliveira here, um, probably by knockout um, in the second round. That's probably the pick. I could see this fight going the distance, but um, I, I just think he's the better fighter here. So, yeah, that's just the, my pick there, per se. Next fight, uh, Umar Namagomedov versus uh, Bizet uh, Alamakin. And, uh, yeah, so... This is another part of my two-way parlay. I, I got Martin Magomedov and uh, Basra in, in a parlay. Um, I think these guys are going to win the fight. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, this Bazette guy, he's good, obviously. Um, and I, I kind of, I'm not going to be doing a breakdown for this week. So I'm not doing any breakdowns. I was planning on it, but I got to get ready for U UFC 299 because there's going to be a lot of videos. So you guys are just going to get this video. This might be a long, like, one-hour video. I don't know how long this is going to be. But uh, I'll, I'll kind of give, like, a mini breakdown here. 
I, I think Umar Namagamadoff is one of the best guys in the division right now. I really, truly believe that. It's just he hasn't had the opportunity to really show it against high-level competition. Um, his last fight was like, what, a year ago? Yeah, it was one year ago against Ronnie Barcelos. He fought like, what, the first card of the year, and now he's fighting. Well, this ain't the first card of the year, but it's pretty early in the new year, right? But um, he completely knocked out Ronnie Barcelos. He was scheduled to fight Corey Sanhagen, and then he pulled out. He had a really good opportunity. He lost it. Now they gave him Bazette. This, this Kagasani kid is really good. 17 to 1 fighter, fucking legit knockout power, good striking. But the issue is, I think this fight can be really interesting on the feet. We know Umar's really bouncy. He, he kind of takes a, a, a bit of a taekwondo stance, a more of a karate stance, uh, just a very light on his toes kind of stance where he's, you know, ba- uh, back and forth, jumping, 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 and then he kind of like strikes, right? So we know what Umar's really good at, and we know what he does, and he can strike, but we also, we got to remember the Nate, the Nate Maness fight. He can wrestle. He can wrestle hard. He has no problem humping, right? He, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, grinding or <laughs> the Boal style, <laughs> you know, he has no problem doing that. And I think that's how this fight goes. I, I think he's just going to out-wrestle Bazek. I think the wrestling edge is going to be too much. I think they know, stylistically, this is a dangerous fight to take. Very low reward. Uh, very high risk, honestly. Um, you don't get a lot of notoriety for beating this kid because no one knows him and no one knows how good this kid is. I think he's going to be really good. Um, and I'm, I'm, at, I'm actually interested they took this fight. I, I was like in shock. I thought they were going to take a ranked opponent, but you're, you're taking a debutant, uh, who's unknown, but has a lot of potential. It's going to be a tough fight. I just think Umar is just going to wrestle hard. And I just, I really do think, you know, the single leg's going to be there. The takedowns are going to be there. The wrestling scrambles are going to be there. I mean, Umar's chain wrestling is just going to be there. And I don't know if Bizet can. He can probably defend the first initial takedown, but it's the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth <laughs> attempt in takedowns that when Umar is just piling it up, he's going to get, I think he's going to get tired, overwhelmed. Could be a close fight, but I do think this fight, if it's on the feet, could be interesting. So, I wouldn't be mad if you guys are sprinkling some uh, a unit on uh, on the Bazette money line, or maybe him getting the uh, getting the finish beat KO. I would I would not be mad at that at all. I I don't think that's a bad bet at all. But uh, I got Umar on my made off here probably by decision. I think it should be a good fight, man. It's good, honest fight, honestly. So I uh, can't wait for it. Um, next fight: Mashnell versus Steve uh, Urseg. Man, another good scrap in the flyweight division. This is a flyweight showcase. Uh, they got some really good flyweight fights here. Um, I so here's the thing, man. Skill for skill, I, I think Chanel is better than this guy, bro. I really do. But where Steve has him beat is, is the chin department, durability. Um, I really like Chanel, bro. The the Sudamarji fight was a fucking classic, bro. But he got knocked out bad by Matis Nicolau, um, and then Royval got him pretty good. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. You know, Pantoja rocked him. Steve Ursay, he didn't look great against uh, Costa, but he won. He looked good in moments. But my God, against David Dvorak, he looked amazing. And I, I think David Dvorak is a really good, well rounded fighter, but chinny, right? He's shown to be a little hittable, a little, you know, he can be hurt, right? Nationale is known to be hurt. And we saw what Steve Ursay did to a guy that had, lacks durability. He has a great performance. I kind of see that going in the same direction. I, I just think, I, I think he's just, it's going to be too much. The, the one, two down the pipe. I just don't think Schnell's going to be able to eat that, man. I really don't. Um, it's going to be a fun fight though. It's going to be a good scrap. Uh, obviously Urseg is a bit of a decisionator. Um, and he does go to decision a lot, but here's my thing. I, I think and his jiu-jitsu is really underrated too. Like that's also another aspect of the matchup. I don't think uh, Matt Schnell is going to go out there and out grapple him. Uh, I think this is going to be a really, really good scrap in terms of grappling, you know, striking, as long as it lasts, right? Now, do I think he's going to get finished? I don't know. I, could I see Urseg maybe dropping him, getting a club and stuff? Yeah, that's a possibility. But most likely I see Urseg dropping him at moments, hurting him at key moments, winning the rounds probably at the end. Uh, and pr- potentially getting a 29, 28 or 30, 27 decision victory. Um, and that's just how I see it, man. I, I think Urse is just, he- he's really well rounded. Uh, obviously he's a flyweight. Most of those flyweights are well rounded, but, um, he's young. He's a prospect. He's 28 years old. Schnell's 34. 
it's how the game kind of goes. And I, I just see Ursay just winning this fight, probably by decision, but I would not be surprised by a club and sub victory. Honestly, I, I really could see it. Um, yeah, we've seen Chanel be submitted before, but it's going to be a good fight, man. This fight is something I'm actually going to be uh, ha having a fun time to watch besides the fucking main event. Motherfucker, Jersey. <laughs> this guy's, it's bald man, bro. This bald man, Dana White, bro. <laughs> guy's crazy. All right, next fight. Alex Perez versus Muhammad Makayev, man. This is one of the fights I was, I was thinking about doing a breakdown on, but uh, I just, you know, it's time and work and just what matters is, is kind of getting in the way of it. But um, this is a great fight in the flyweight division, man. And you guys know, man, I'm, I'm taking the dog here, Alex Perez. You guys know me. Your boy eBay's been hating on Muhammad Makaya for the longest <laughs> before it was cool. Um, I think a lot of people forgot how good Alex Perez is. Um, Alex Perez is good wrestling, good striking, good calf kicks. If this fight happens, for the love of God, please, by the way, please, let's, let's do a quick prayer, bro. <laughs> please, MMA gods, let's make sure Alex Perez shows up because the guy that fought Juicier Formiga, beats Muhammad Makaib and I, I I'm ready really to put money on it. I got a unit on him, uh on his money line and I, I think Price gets this gets the victory here. He's good enough on the ground. Um his striking is good. His calf kicks are good. I know it's a stretch. I know some people are like, come on eBay bro, now you're just hating. I understand Muhammad Makaib looked good against Tim Elliott. But Malcolm Gordon had moments, bro. I know he's 10 and 0, but he's also 23. I know he has a crazy amateur record, right? I understand that, but he's not a grown man like Alex Perez, who's entering his prime at 31, all right? There's a lot of things this kid can learn. I think Alex Perez has a, a real good opportunity to go out here and shock the whole world and, and put this kid in his place. Um, nothing against Mom and Clive. He's a good fire. Obviously, super active, training at uh, Tiger Muay Thai. Uh, a lot of good momentum. He's looked really good. Uh, obviously, uh, the Elliott fight was a good fight for him, but... Again, moments. Elliot had moments. He had moments, you know. Um, Hafa Fialo, whatever that guy's name, had moments, you know. He's not unstoppable. And, and that's just my point. Like, I don't think he's unstoppable. Obviously, he's had really good fights, you know. The Code Durden performance was really good for, for a debut. But, and I know Alex Perez coming off losses to Davidson Figueredo and Alejandro Pantoja, the two last champions, by the way, just saying. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, activity has been his issue. That's been his Achilles heel and showing up and getting to that octagon. But I, I just think that he's taking a lot of time off and he fucking goes for it, y'all. He goes for it and he's in the pocket and he'll scrap with you. Yeah, he gets submitted sometimes and he gets caught, but these are the best submission guys in the game. Davis Figueredo has a killer guillotine, bro. Alejandro Protosha is a monster on the back. So, my my point is Perez has a real legit shot here to shock the world. The calf kick's gonna be fucking necessary. I, I need him to throw that calf kick relentlessly and get in uh Muhammad Makai's face. Don't let this guy run away. Get in his face and then just scramble, wrestle, and just get up, man. That's that's what it's gonna come down to. Now obviously Makaev is, is a good grappler. He really is. And that's still probably one of the things that I, I do lean towards uh Makaev and the wrestling and maybe even the submissions all right yeah uh, Perez has been submitted before I, I could see a submission victory for Makaev but dude if you're if you're picking Makaev that's why they won't remember your name because that's why you got to pick Alex Perez in these moments all right I think Alex Perez can win this fight bro I really do now I, I could end up being a punk <laughs> I could look stupid but hey that's that's the that's the that's the game we play uh I think Alex Perez wins this fight by decision. It'll be a highly close fight, really high level. But I think Perez teaches him the rope. So I could be wrong. I could eat crow. I've accepted that reality. And I, I'll probably, I could lose my money. But I also could win. So, you know, that's how I kind of look at it. But it should be a good fight. I got Alex Perez, bro. Uh, Alex Perez, leader of the free world, baby. We're, we're getting it done, baby. We're getting it done. Um, next fight, Eric Anders versus Jamie Pickett. I'm, I'm going to keep this pretty simple. Um, Jamie Pickett is an insane athlete, but not a good MMA fighter. Um, Eric Anders is a really good athlete, but is a decent MMA fighter. And when you have a not good MMA fighter fighting a decent MMA fighter, right? The decent MMA fighter ends up winning. Um, and that's how I kind of look at it. I mean, Eric Anders, uh, your boy. <laughs> good grappling, good power, 
decent striking. Um, I mean, a- Anders is a really experienced dude, man. I-, I remember when this guy, he had like, they gave him a fight night main event against Lyoto Machida, right? So he's been five rounds before. Like, he's been in the game. He's fought some of the toughest guys. I'll never forget the Thiago Santos fight. Um, he's fought some really good guys. Jamie Pickett, super chinny. Uh, he's on a four or five losing streak. It's about to be five. I, I think Eric Anders. He might get the KO here. He hasn't got a KO in a very long time. Oh no, he did. He did. My bad. Uh, Kyle Dawkins. I was tripping. But um, but I th- I think he gets another one. Um, he is coming off a loss to Mark Andre Beria, but that's okay, man. Andre Beria has good cardio output and he's a decent fighter. I, I think Eric Anders. I I think he's gonna. I, he's gonna get Jamie Pick <laughs> Pick it released. Uh, that's how I kind of see this fight going. And yeah, I know Pickett has the length. But he doesn't know how to use it. I'm sorry, but I'm rocking Eric Anders here. Uh, the power, the wrestle, and the experience. I, I, the experience is something that's big for me in this matchup. He's just, and, and I'm talking about UFC experience, uh, high level experience like Khalil Roundtree. I mean, Khalil ain't he ain't high level, but still, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But still, like he's fought some good tough guys, you know. And I, I think Anders gets the KO victory here, and Jamie Pickett's chinny too. So uh, I, I got Anders here by first round KO. Should be a good fight though. I can't wait for it. Um, actually, I take that back. Uh, that, I'm so used to saying that, y'all. I'm sorry. I am not. That that's not a good fight, bro. <laughs> that is not a good fight, and I'm not necessarily hyped for it. I just said that because I say that for everything. It's just. <laughs> It just become a, it became an issue at that point. But yeah, uh, next fight, uh, Vito Patron versus Tyson Pedro. Uh, Patron, uh, has looked really good. And obviously this is a, it's a good test for him. I mean, Tyson Pedro has been trying to make a bit of a resurgence in the division. It's kind of like if in a, you know, little catch up. Obviously he, he does have that loss, uh, Medesca Spacalcus. Um, but I mean, he looked good against Harry Hansucker, uh, Ike Villanueva, and then his last fight, uh, uh, Anton Tajorki, uh, got a really good knockout there. Um, uh, ever since he's moved to CKB, he's been more le- a leg kick orientated and obviously using striking, uh, at a, at a more high rate. Now, obviously CKB, I think has, is, he's still trying to figure out their system still. So obviously he has some l- learning, um, Obviously, pains to go through, but I think Vito's just a fucking tank, bro. And in the grappling, it should be interesting because Tyson Pedro's not a bad grappler. Uh, so it should be some interesting scrambles. But, I mean, he's a 10-0 guy, man. He's looking like a monster. Legit knockout power. Uh, it's an interesting fight, bro. Um, obviously, Pedro is a more experienced guy. But, I mean, what Vito just did to fucking... Um, uh, not only just Medestas, but Calcus, but Marcin Pragno, man, he just threw him like a child, bro. Every time they got on the ground, it just, it, it just seemed like this guy has a legit grappling edge here. Not necessarily with Tyson Pedro, but like a, a edge with a lot of guys. And I don't know if it's the physicality of him that's giving these guys problems, but it just, it just seems like he's just way stronger than these guys. And he's just ragged all on him. And I, I can kind of see him, him doing that to Tyson Pedro. I don't know if he's going to go out there and submit Tyson Pedro. Tyson Pedro has been submitted before, but I wouldn't be surprised. It, it, it should be a good fight. I think Pedro is going to be looking at, you know, circling the octagon, trying to get his leg kicks in, trying to like kind of fight the long game, trying to outpoint this guy a little bit, maybe find a shot, try to find a knockout shot, try to find something where he can, he can really counter, uh, off the offense that he's throwing, right? So I, I, I don't know. Like it's, it's a tough fight. Um, but I, I lean towards the younger guy, the more athletic guy, the more menacing guy, the guy that looks like he's on real, real, real juice right now. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I, it's, I'm not necessarily picking, uh, Mr. Vitor, but I'm rocking with Vitor's, uh, doctor. So I'm just saying it like that, you know, but I think Vitor gets the submission victory actually, um, in the second round. Uh, do I have anything on the fight? No, I'm kind of like staying away from it because I, I can see a Tyson Pedro fraud check here. I really, really could. I, would not be shocked if Tyson Pedro goes out there and, and you know teach this kid the ropes. But physicality, youth, aggression, just 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 pure fucking um, raw talent. I, I'm gonna lean towards there because I think there is a good chance he wins this fight. But I, I don't have anything on the fight though. Um, and in the main event, Jarzinho Rosenstrike versus Shamil Godzi. Um, I, I got Biggie Boy, even though I, I shitted on him on the, probably this whole video. I, I think J- Biggie Boy wins this fight. Uh, I actually have Biggie Boy. Uh, I'm on Biggie Boy's money line. I, I I put also another unit on him winning the fight via TKO and KO. 
Do I think Sh- Shamil Godzi could probably win this fight? I wouldn't be surprised if he goes out there and wrestles. He has a good chance, but um, I mean, Biggie Boy, he's been here. He's done that. He's been fighting for a minute. He's had these main events. You know what I'm saying? He, he's basically <laughs> Mr. Apex at this point. Him and Jamal Hill and a few of these other guys, bro. Mr. Apex, you know? So, I, obviously, we, we know how good... Um, Oh, I shouldn't say we know how good we we know how experienced uh Jarzinho is. Godzi, I mean, he's coming off a good win over Bidet. Uh, he looked amazing, fucking pieced him up. But I mean, it's a five round fight. It's it's a it's the main event. It, a lot of the spotlight's gonna be on him. Do I think he go out there and whoop on Jarzinho? Maybe, but shit, why not pick Jarzinho? Shit, you know, fuck it. I, I I think he get the knockout here. I he's he he's been here before. He's done that. Um. And it's, this isn't, like, he's not Godzi in his second goddamn UFC, or his third UFC fight. No, it's his second. Nah, it's his second UFC fight. Because he has the contender series fight, and then, yeah. So, yeah, he's not he's not in a position where he's, in his second fight, where he's fighting in a main event. No, no, he's been here, he's done that. He's had main events before. He's been five rounds before. He's fought some of the best guys in the world before. And um, he has legit knockout power. And uh, his takedown defense is getting better. You know what I'm saying? So, um Obviously, it, it, you know, the fucking, uh, the Almeida fight, it made him look bad, but I think Jolton Almeida is a monster. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's okay. Um, I, I think Biggie Boy, he, you know, he kind of does this. He'll lose a fight and then win a fight, lose a fight, win a fight. You know, he kind of does this. I think Biggie Boy gets back on the win column and I think he gets the uh, second on TKO. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I'm rocking with Biggie Boy here. Um, be a second on TKO. And I do have a, a unit on his money line and also another unit uh, on him getting the uh, fight done via TKO. So that's about it. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the full card predictions. At the end of the video, you guys know you guys receive all my bets and who I'm rocking with. But yeah, love y'all. Goodbye to boy eBay. Fight predictions. I'm out of here. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you're new and you made it this far, subscribe, motherfucker. <laughs> love y'all. Goodbye. Channel. I'm going to go check that out. And, uh, hey, subscribe to eBay's Fight Prediction. Let's keep the eBay Fight Predictions nation growing.